Good evening everyone and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Tonight's message I have titled, The Hedge Has Been Removed. The Bible meditation comes from Psalm 80 verse 12. Why have you broken down her hedges so that all who pass by her way pluck her fruit? Encouraging word. The verse that I just read was written about Israel. The first thing that we have to ask is this, why were the hedges of protection broken down? Israel was a nation that was divinely planted by God. They were to be his chosen people, but time and time again, they had turned their hearts to idols and other gods. God had put a hedge of protection around Israel that could not be removed. Against all odds, they were able to defend themselves against their enemies even when it looked as if they had no chance of victory. With the hand of God over them, they were invincible. But because of their constant rebellion toward their creator and chasing after other gods, they eventually lost that hedge of protection. The time finally came when God temporarily removed his hedge of protection. And I say temporarily because Jesus prophesied that Israel would once again be brought back into their homeland in the latter days where they would once again become fruitful and mighty in military strength. That prophecy became true when Israel became a nation once again on May 14, 1948, just as Jesus had prophesied. Going back to the straw that broke the camel's back was when Israel was trodden down by Titus Vespasian and the Roman Legion. The siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD was the decisive event of the first Jewish-Roman war in which the Roman army led by future emperor Titus Vespasian besieged Jerusalem. Following a brutal five-month siege, the Romans destroyed the city and the second Jewish temple all the way down to the final stone. But before that great and terrible day in Jewish history, we read where the Jews had constantly turned from God time and time again. And every time until 70 AD, God had heard their prayers of repentance and had forgiven them for their sins. The final straw was when they rejected their long-awaited Messiah and hung him on a Roman cross to suffer the most painful, horrific death known to man. Just days before Jesus was to be crucified, we read in Luke 19, 42, where Jesus said, saying to Israel, if you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Jesus was prophesying that Israel would be destroyed because of their rejection of their Messiah, as we read in Matthew 24, verse 2. And Jesus said to them, the disciples, Do you not see all these things? And he's talking about the temple in particular. Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be trodden down. God had finally removed his hedge of protection from the land that he planted, but just like I said, it was temporary, as we read in Romans 11, 25-27. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And just so you understand, this covenant was unconditional. So it was forever. The fullness of the Gentiles will be when the rapture of the church takes place then God will once again turn his attention to Israel for one more seven-year period known to us as the Great Tribulation or the 70th week of Daniel. This is just a short history lesson 
on what happened to Israel when they turned from God to worship graven images and serve other gods. So why is this so important to us here in America? It is because we are on the same path that led to Israel's destruction. When America was founded, it was based on Christian principles. There have been many documented speeches from our founding fathers that are proof of our nation living under Judeo-Christian values. We read in the Declaration of Independence the following verse, which is probably the most well-known sentence of the Declaration, where it states, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I could quote many words from our founding fathers that are clear evidence that America was founded on Judeo-Christian principles, but here is just one example of what they believed. Thomas Jefferson is quoted as saying, I am a real Christian, that is to say, a disciple of the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Society today is trying to discredit the truth of what was declared at the time when America was founded. They are trying to convince the younger generation that the Founding Fathers were not Christians. And the sad thing is, they are successfully persuading the youth of today that the history of America was all lies about how we were a Christian nation from the beginning. Everything that I learned back when I was in school is not being taught today. They're trying to erase our nation's history for obvious reasons. Reasons which I will not get into at this time. I truly believe that God had planted America to be one nation under God, and for the most part, up until a few decades ago, we were living under what was written in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and other valuable documents that our Founding Fathers wrote and signed into law for our safety and protection against tyranny and oppression. When you look back in history, at the time when America was founded, it seemed as if we were always at war and fighting to preserve our sovereignty and independence against hostile nations. Amazingly, we won every war that we entered, even when it looked like we had no chance of victory. And why do you think that was? I'll tell you why it was. It is because God put a hedge of protection over our once great nation that no nation could penetrate. No one could defeat us as long as God kept us under his hedge of protection. As the years went by, we were victorious in every war, including World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and many others that we got involved in. A question that I need to ask is this. Does anybody recall the first war that we lost? Does Vietnam come to mind? It should. And why do you suppose that was? Well, let's take a look at what happened in America prior to the Vietnam War. For starters, in 1962, we kicked God out of our schools and removed the Bible from each and every school in our nation. Then we legalized abortion and slaughtered millions of innocent babies who could not defend themselves. We passed many other laws that blatantly slapped God in the face. We turned our back on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who gave us this once great nation with the sole purpose of glorifying his name in everything that we would do. From that point on, Things for America started on a downhill trend that got worse and worse as the days went on, where eventually it takes us to where we are today. I could get into statistics about all the evil that came to America in the last few decades, and even more so in the last 20 years, but I'll spare the details at this time. One has to be totally blind not to see that something is drastically wrong in our nation. We are at the point where Israel was just before God removed their hedge of protection and allowed them to be destroyed to the point where they were no longer a nation. 
We have crossed the threshold of insanity. We have gone way beyond the boundaries of common sense. I've heard a prayer that was spoken by a pastor whose name I will not mention because of possible violation of privacy. This pastor went on to say in his prayer, we have lost our spiritual equilibrium and inverted our values. And this pastor went on to say, and I quote, this is quite an extensive list of things that need to be mentioned so you're aware of what happened to our country. We confess that we have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and called it pluralism. We have worshipped other gods and called it multiculturalism. We have endorsed perversion and called it alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have neglected the needy and called it self-preservation. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed the unborn and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it political savvy. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. A tidal wave of filth has been sweeping across America for quite some time now. Crookedness, lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, divorce, murder, lust, drugs. And we think America is number one? Well, she is. We are number one in homosexuality, number one in radical feminism, number one in divorce, number one in the destruction of family values, number one in abortion, number one in political correctness, and number one in occult humanistic new age religion. And then we wonder why all hell is breaking loose in America. God has moved his hedge of protection from our once great God-fearing nation. I've heard it said that people believe our nation is great because of gold, wealth, power, and Wall Street. Well, I disagree. There's only one thing that made America great, and that is Jesus Christ. We seem to have forgotten all of what Jesus Christ did for us from the cross all the way to making America a great God-fearing country. The same consequences that happened to Israel back in 70 AD are on the near horizon for America if, and I emphasize if, we don't get on our knees as a nation and repent of our evil ways and call on God to heal our land. We read this promise in 2 Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. My friends, there's still hope because of this promise made by God, but the ball is in our court. Every day that we delay puts us one more day deeper into the miry muck that we have created. I believe that our opportunity to be healed here in America is coming to an end. And we will see the same consequences that Israel had succumbed to. So will we continue down this path of destruction or will we turn to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, get on our knees and call out to him for mercy? That is our only hope. Outside of that hope, we have no hope at all. So you can ignore all this and hope I'm wrong. Or you can take seriously what I shared with you and get on your knees, turn to Jesus Christ for your salvation, or you can go on living life like everything will be fine. If you choose the latter, you will be cast into the most horrific time that the Bible speaks of as the Great Tribulation. Here's what Jesus said about this time, and I'll close with this Bible verse. Matthew 24, 21. 
For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world, until this time no, nor ever shall be. If you believe the Bible is the true and inerrant word of God, then listen up. The time that Jesus spoke of is on the very near horizon. If you don't believe that the Bible is a true and inerrant word of God, then you have much bigger problems than what is in the near future. Once again, it is your choice. Nobody can make that choice for you. Will you turn to Jesus Christ for your salvation? Or will you choose the lake of burning fire for all eternity? Two choices. Which one will you choose? There are no others. I hope you choose the right one. God bless and take care.